Hey, I'm Andrew Connell. This video is an overview of one of the chapters in my course, Mastering the SharePoint Framework, that's available for uh, purchase on my site, Voitanos.io. This overview video is going to give you an idea of everything that the chapter uh, covers. You can learn more by checking out the description uh, in the notes below the video. Um, if you got any questions about this chapter or about the course in general, just make sure you drop a comment uh, below in, in the uh, below the video and I'll be sure to get back to you. So with that, let me get out of the way. Enjoy the overview to this chapter. Many of the artifacts in SharePoint sites can be created not only with a browser, but also declaratively or with one of the various API options that Microsoft gives us. What are these artifacts? Things like site columns or content types that enable us to define structured data types. These artifacts also include list templates and instances of the list based off of these different templates. And when we talk about creating SharePoint assets, you will see people generally refer to it as a provisioning process, hence why the chapter is named Provisioning SharePoint Assets. Previous SharePoint development models enabled developers to provision assets in SharePoint sites. Now the SharePoint framework also allows for provisioning SharePoint assets upon activation of the solution package, as well as upgrading these assets. Now in this chapter, you're gonna learn how to provision SharePoint assets in SPFX projects. So let's look at what you're gonna find in this chapter. In this chapter, we'll start out first by looking at an overview on provisioning SharePoint assets. And then we'll look at the different approaches and patterns we have to provisioning assets, including the declarative or XML based approach and also using the SharePoint REST API. Now, while we have a couple different options available to us, and I'll cover them in more detail as we move throughout the chapter, we're gonna focus primarily in this course on the SharePoint framework. So I'm just gonna look at the declarative approach primarily in the demo for how to create and provision assets using a SharePoint framework-based solution. So that's the demo that we'll focus on, but I'll provide links and references on where you can learn more about provisioning with the SharePoint REST API that are not so specific to the SharePoint framework. 